Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Manuele Piastra. Hey, Manuele, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. Absolutely. So Tuesday is Team Tuesday. We want to dive into a specific team and learn more about what they might be doing or might have been doing that caused problems. But before we dive into that, do share with us, Manuela, what was the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? No, it's, uh, it's not really a book about Scrum, but it's, uh, it's Drive by Daniel Pink. Um, I found myself resorting to uh, you know to the three the three key motivating factor of mastery autonomy and purpose in many 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 situations that when I'm about to design a workshop when I'm about to design a new tool when I'm thinking of what could be missing to a team to succeed I keep going back to this um I read it many years ago and throughout all these years uh, I feel that I still refer to it yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, da uh, Dan Pink's uh, motivation or even engagement and motivation model is one that is very also very easy for us to communicate towards others. And when you think about aspects like mastery, uh, especially in the software development world, that's something that is very much in the, the, in the mind of the people we work with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um I found myself, uh, for example, thinking of of some tools. For example, one very popular, uh, you know, goal setting framework like OKRs. I think they really resonate with two aspects of of the uh, of the items in you know in 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 Drive, which are both autonomy and mastery. Um, sorry, <laughs> purpose and autonomy. So uh, setting a purpose, but leaving. The, the solution, the how to the teams. I think it really resonates with both items. Yeah, and, and as you describe it, I'm just thinking what you just said is also a great way to describe to product owners how to productively interact with their teams, right? Because the product Absolutely. owners bring that purpose and autonomy to the team and, and implementing the autonomy isn't always easy for product owners, especially the ones with technical background. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, those, the, the, those, um, those motivating factors for me, they come out in everything, really in everything that I do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, of course, we're talking about teams right here with the, the motivation and engagement model by Daniel Pink. And uh, we're going to talk about teams again, uh, especially we're going to talk about certain patterns or behaviors that certain teams develop over time that lead to problems. We want you to tell us a story of a team you were involved with, Manel, Manuele, and also walk us through you know, how those small little things that started perhaps as just side comments in a meeting developed over time and created problems for that team? Yes. So uh, this is, a, this is a, um, a story of, I was, I was an agile coach in that team, not a scrum master, but uh, there was a scrum master. Uh, and the dynamic or the behaviors that I, f I thought were really non-functional, right, and they led to issues was where I would call this the pattern of the Scrum Master, the Scrum Master being only the servant without the other part, the, the, the leader, leader part. <laughs> yes. So how did so, that look like? Yeah, so that looks like this. Uh, the team, um, so the Scrum Master joins the team um, they announce themselves, you know, I will be here to support you, help you. I am going to be a servant leader, right? So the team members, they hear servant and they go into, uh, can you write these stories for us? Can you move the story into done? Can you take uh, meetings, minutes? Uh, can you take notes? Um, can you run all the meetings and stuff like that? Um, so the Scrum Master, uh, sometimes, you know, junior, 
uh, but they're not necessarily. Uh, they feel like, okay, I am giving my value by doing these things because the team is happy, right? They say, oh, good job. Oh, thanks you. Thank you. If we didn't have you, you know, we would have to do all this stuff. Uh, but then, of course, when, um, you know, if you are, you know, in a meeting, um, for example, and the Scrum Master says, oh, should we really, uh, should we really be doing this? this kind of falls in the, in, into the silence, right? So the challenging part has been lost because in the eyes of the teams, in the team of you, you've become the secretary, the, the, the PA. Um, so I, I chose this example because I wanted to bring, you know, um, the Scrum Master is part of the team. And sometimes the, the dynamics and the behavior of the Scrum Master, of course, influence uh, the dynamics of the team and uh, Scrum Master can and sometimes exhibit behaviors that are not entirely functional. So what this is causing is that uh, basically the team doesn't get challenged. So for the most important, um, you know, they, for the most important uh, aspect, they keep doing stuff as they were doing before, but they got a handy secretary. So when, when I hear this, uh, I can imagine that this might be not necessarily even a, a junior Scrum Master. In fact, I've seen this pattern also with very senior Scrum Masters who were very comfortable with that position because it, I, I can imagine that this also um, removes or uh, obviates a lot of the responsibility from the Scrum Master, right? Because I'm just doing what I'm told. Like, I don't need to do any, you know... Uh, Let's say I don't need to challenge, therefore risk conflict. Uh, I don't need to go out of the team and bring in stakeholder view or product owner view because that would mean getting out of my comfort zone and so on. So it, it can also be a very comfortable position even for senior scrum masters. Yes, and uh, yes, absolutely. That there might be some fear of conflict, uh, conflict which doesn't necessarily need that you are a junior scrum master. There are also other stuff that, to be honest, in the you know in in our in our domain, haven't been possibly clarified very well, and they can lead to confusions, right? So if you have a scrum master and an agile coach in the team, how do they overlap? How are they different? Um, you know, as that is not necessarily super clear to many people, even to us, to be honest. So there's many contributing, uh, many contributing factors. Um, but the well, I guess you know the learning and and the advice, right? If I had, if if I had a scrum master sitting close to me here, um, I would say, um, you are there to to disrupt a little bit, right? So don't be afraid to disrupt um, because um, it takes a little bit of courage and there's many ways to disrupt, right? You don't necessarily need to create uh, open conflict. Um, uh, although conflict is, is the, you know, the gateway to improvement, right? You know, properly solved conflict is the way to improvement. So it's kind of, uh, you know, my advice, my advice would be don't be afraid to create waves because waves are the things that will lead you to actually change. And maybe m m that's a great point, right? Because waves or disruption, as you call it, uh, are triggers for change and learning also. But uh, I, I was just thinking, as you were saying that, that it might even be something else than fear of conflict. Uh, there's a driver within all of us, which is to be loved, right? We all want to be loved and appreciated. And, and some people who might not get that enough in their personal life, or maybe because of you know how they were educated, they may feel that, okay, if I do the things that the team wants me to do, then they, they appreciate me, they, they recognize me, they accept me and they need that kind of validation. It might even be like our own personal drivers as scrum masters that kind of pushes into those kinds of uh, patterns or anti-patterns in this case, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And on this point, um, on, this, on this point, you know, the, um, the willingness to be liked as humans, which actually it's, it's beyond scrum, right? You know, we all, we all feel like we want to be appreciated. Um, 
it is it is a human need. Uh, but as as Scrum Master and other coaches, we need to be aware that that can open the door to manipulation. You know, um, so uh, and uh, you know, I mean it in you know some people. It might even be um, you know it happens, but people are not really aware, right? It might happen in an unconscious way. But the thing is. But the thing is, we need to be careful when um, when we feel flattered because the, the team members are saying, oh, you know, we, you know, if it weren't for you, uh, we would spend so much time managing the backlog and moving the stories and Jira is so boring and the meetings are so boring and stuff. But you all, you know, you do all that. Uh, but the thing is, really challenge, challenge yourself and say, but is this really what I'm supposed to do here? Um, because, you know, the Scrum Master um, has really, they are change agents. They are, they are challenging the status quo. They are, they are um, getting the team to a point where they are less dependent on the Scrum Master, right? So, um you know, if the teams expect you to be the one starting and running the stand-up after the first few weeks, um, that's a smell, right? That's so, definitely a smell. Yeah. Espe especially if they are asking you to do a lot of stuff. Like every now and then it's perfectly fine. Don't think too much about it. But like if in every meeting they ask, hey, wouldn't you... Or can you schedule or can you move this? Can you talk to, right? Then it's really good to step back as the scrum master and say, oh, I could, of course, but uh, what would be the reason for you not to do it? Exactly. So, so then to manage that human need of feeling appreciated and value, I would say challenge that with, am I doing the most valuable thing here, right? And And the other is am I empowering them to be less dependent on me? Um, now, on this, there's a big chapter. I don't know if we if we yeah, want we'll to open. probably talk about it on Thursday, actually. So. Right, okay, okay. <laughs> but Ole, this was a great story and an awesome reflection on the importance of really being self-aware uh, as Scrum Masters of the kind of behaviors that we are exhibiting. Thank you for sharing that. No worries. Thank you for... Give me the chance to speak about this. Tuesday is team day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.